reason that he picked many of them. Joining me now, Georgia Republican Senator David Perdue. Good to have you with us today, Senator. Hi, Martha. You know, what do you think of the cabinet picks? Obviously, you're close to one of them who was just named uh, Agriculture Secretary nominee last night. Tell me about that. Well, this is, this is what I told people during the campaign, that uh, President-elect Donald Trump has a history of putting great people around him. This, this uh, lineup of potential nominees is stellar. I mean, look at the results of these people. These are highly accomplished people with great track records of getting results. Last night, President Trump called my cousin, Sonny Perdue, and offered him the job of Secretary of Ag, and my cousin accepted. So today they're beginning the process. But as we see going around us uh, today, even in these hearings, this is a process. It's, it's a great process, and these are fantastic people in my mind, and it, it really gives me encouragement about the opportunity to change the direction of our country. Charles Schumer, uh, Senator Schumer doesn't agree with that. Here's what he had to say about it. Watch. I don't know if any of these cabinet picks will be defeated. If a few Republicans do the right thing, they could, and that's still a real possibility. But it is crystal clear that the president-elect is starting off by governing from the hard right and without any concern for conflict of interest or ethics. Your response to that, sir? Well, that's an obvious response from the, the minority leader, but here's the reality. Under Barack Obama, his top eight cabinet picks only had five years collectively in the chief executive position or chief operating officer position, any of the C-suite positions in the private sector. This group of cabinet nominees in the, just the top eight positions has over 80 years of that. The private sector is fully represented here, as is the uh, uh, experience here in Washington. So. I think uh, Senator Schumer is off base. I think these people know how to get results. That's why the people of America elected Donald Trump, is to get America working again. You know, let, let's put up that screen, if we could, again, of the cabinet picks, because there's been a lot of criticism out there, you know, with people saying, oh, it's just, you know, a big bunch of uh, white guys, basically. And, you know, when you look at it, compared, actually, with, with President Obama's, Obama's cabinet, the makeup is not all that different. Uh, there are no Hispanics in this cabinet pick, and there was one, I believe, in Trump's picks. Should that matter to the American people? Well, you want any group of people like this to represent America. It should be diverse, and it is diverse. What I think this is is more of a distraction away from the job at hand, and that is we, we have people being nominated now that have careers of proven accomplishments. I was in the Senate uh, uh, Armed Services Committee last week uh, uh, interviewing and talking to General Mattis, and I had a chance to meet Rex Tillerson this week and serve Dr. Carson. I mean, these people are proven leaders. They know how to get results. And that's what we're about here in Washington. We want to break through the gridlock and get some things done. That's what the American people have given us here is a, a I think, a probation period, not a mandate. And they expect to, us to get results. So how many do you think will be approved by tomorrow afternoon? Well, we're hopeful. We're going to go back into session in the Senate. We'll find out. But I'm hoping three to five, something like that, order of magnitude, will be confirmed tomorrow afternoon after the president's sworn in. We will see. Um, two is the number that has been floated, Mattis and uh, Kelly at Homeland. So we'll see. Thank you very much, Senator. Great to have you with us today.